Bernie Blackout. Uh, Woo! Yeah. I saw Fiorella on Twitter this morning going hang, but she was pissed. She was pissed by it. What was the, what was the problem her. with the movie, Fee? What was the problem with it? Well, first of all, they mm -hmm. they uh, the title. Uh, yeah. Right? Well, I mean, no, I still think he got. I still think that they didn't show him as much. I mean, my mother would tell me they're not showing his rallies on CNN. They're they're really like that's how she got really like radicalized this time around because she was like, oh my god, they're not talking about him a lot. There was a blackout, not as much as there was in 2016. It was more negative spins on media. Mm -hmm. But what really irritated me was the um, propping up of people like Chuck Rocha on on there as if Chuck Rocha, who was propped up a lot, unfortunately, by rising um, by by, you know, Crystal and uh, Sager, because they I mean, they didn't know. But like, yeah. he was consistently propped up by them and he's still going on these shows propped up by the mainstream media as if he was the reason Bernie Sanders won the Latino vote. And I can't tell you how that irritates the hell out of me mm -hmm. when I hear that, because that man was nowhere. He was barely ever here. Texas lost. You can tell that Texas didn't have the organizing that we had here because we, in spite of all the che cheating, we won. The thing that really pisses me off the most though, is the fact that they zero, zero mention of election issue. They didn't even mention California's elections they didn't mention anything not even voter suppression was mentioned and not obama you calling. can't yeah. not obama not you the lies talk about the media without talking about how that catapulted the election rigging because they were trying to frame it so you wouldn't be surprised that joe biden won when we knew in reality these numbers that we see here the how we see him um winning why do you think he's losing against donald trump because he didn't really win Yep. Like that's what that, irritated me most. That's it, Fee. You said it because he didn't really. Same thing with Hillary because she didn't really win. Go ahead, Pasta. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna say that I I don't like the title. I said Bernie Blackout because I don't believe it was a blackout this time. And it really we have to look at this movie and really take. I don't think a lot of people are gonna take from from it what they really should. Anytime the media attacks you like that, you got to do what Donald Trump did. You got to make it a golden opportunity to attack them back. Who are you with again? Oh, fake news. You know, Donald Trump was attacked from his candidates. He had to take them on. He, had to, he was attacked by Rubio, Cruz. He had to take them on, and then he had to take on the media at the same time. I even talk about the fact that, you know, Tulsi Gabbard took a lot of the candidate pressure off Bernie Sanders. She went after everybody. All Bernie had to do was take care of two people. And I think somewhat of the Elizabeth Warren situation kind of worked itself out where she stepped on her own toes and, and made herself a snake. But Biden and the media, every single time that Trump was challenged by the media, you know what you are? You're fake news. Look at the clip of Jesse Ventura when he's attacked by a guy from Fox. You know, it doesn't surprise me that this story would come from a, a network like Fox News and then go into it. That's what we didn't see for Bernie. Bernie protected the media sometimes instead of going after them. Most he times. didn't reach out to the independent media that was created. Was he on your show? How many times was he on? Class? Oh man, he I was kind of pissed when all the time. Yeah, no, he wanted to dance in that arena, Nico. It's a golden opportunity when the media attacks you. If you attack them back, people already hate the media. They don't trust the media. They don't like the establishment. He did not throw the punches where it needed to be thrown. So here's what I liked about the movie. Movie, um, I do like the fact that they were addressing the establishment narratives. I do like they they were saying uh, you know talking about the fact that Pete Buttigieg just declared victory and and all that good stuff like I appreciate that um, I appreciate the fact that they had some some independent people on there right even though clearly they were only propping up pro Bernie people that were like exclusively pro Bernie and almost never questioned them like but nonetheless still independent voices got propped up um, however with that being said. They made Bernie out to be this victim who had no control over anything in this. And that's not true. It's just simply yeah. not. It's just not true. Um, they didn't address the fact that, uh, well, let's talk about Chuck Rogan. I, I understand how he ended up in the movie because they obviously started filming this a while ago, right? Before every, all this other stuff came out. But nobody ever talks about this weird thing about, you know, Bernie putting somebody in charge of quote unquote the Latin vote when his whole thing is about labor, right? That's what Bernie's thing is, unions, being pro-union. And Chuck Roca pleaded guilty to almost what 17 counts or something like that of money laundering, taking money from unions, embezzling it. 
and then going to spend it in Myrtle Beach and other places for himself, taking hard earned union dues. Okay. And I, and I want to say this again, because in case anybody was curious, if I changed my mind, no, if Chuck Roker was a black man, I know for a fact he would have never been on that campaign with no goddamn felony charge. Hell, if Chuck, Chuck Roker was a black man, he would have been in jail for what he did, but Chuck Roker never served jail time. Why? Because he was union leadership. The, usually, the most corrupt members of unions are union leadership. That's why he got away with it. So you see him hire this man who is a lot, he's a Latino, but he's white for all intents and purposes. The man considers himself a cowboy. He talks with a country accent. I'm not quite sure how much Spanish he speaks. I'm sure he speaks enough, I guess. But he then goes forward to take credit for all the Latin votes. And like Fiorella said, that was not a thing. But they are allowing him to pontificate, right? He said, oh, we focused a lot on independent media. What's, what's the example of that? Like Cristobal and Sager. I love Sager. That's my boy. I, li I really like Crystal. I, I like their show and I like what they're doing. Crystal that and Sager independent. are not independent yeah. media. Yeah. They're not. The and, that, and that's, a, and that's a, uh, and it's, it actually, it's okay yeah. to say that we finally have a mainstream media that we can tolerate. That's, sure. that's okay to say. Yeah. But, don't, but they kept propping up Crystal as if she's some independent journalist. So she's not. Crystal's a multi-millionaire 40 times over, bruh. 40 times yeah. over, and I think she's only a couple years older than I am. Yeah. So, and, she, and then she had, you know, it, it, she's a, she was a DC insider, so was Sagar. Sagar talked about that on my show. Like, they have their connections, and they get connections to these campaigns because of who they are. That's, but then you, uh, so, but other than that, Bernie went on Joe Rogan, and then Bernie went on Kyle Kalinske, where One clearly they were, they were both limited and the questions they were allowed to ask him. Nobody was nobody in the independent media world was ever allowed to challenge Bernie like they were allowed to challenge Yang. Like they Never were went allowed on Jimmy. to Yeah. You yeah, how do you go on? Yeah, you were trying to go on independent media, That's but That's ridiculous. But Jimmy's the most influ other than Joe Rogan, but who I don't consider him opinionated. Like Jimmy's the most opinion uh, 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 most influential opinionator, like opinionated commentator in this movement right now. And you don't go on his show. How? So you didn't prop up independent. What you did was we found people who were going to unquestion, unquestionably back Bernie and everything he does and never question him no matter what. That's what yeah. you mean. So let's be clear about that. So yeah. also. Can I also say something about Chuck before ahead. you get away from it? Because the whole thing that really disgusts me about Chuck Roche in this video, and I know Fiorella was really pissed off when I, she made a loud laugh, is when they started, when Chuck presented this image and Vice, you know, supported it, that he was the connection to the grassroots. That's why Chuck Roche was involved in. He was the guy who's, I've dealt with grassroots politics my whole life. They That's disemboweled themselves. They he separated themselves from the grassroots so much in 2020 it was disgusting. The grassroots was thrown in the basura to never be seen again. It, it was all establishment players, and Chuck Rocha had a lot to do with he that. He said consultants too. Yeah, like he, oh, he didn't even say. He said, uh, "I've dealt with consultants and blah blah blah," and so I know how to like that. Those two don't go together. I mean, the time La Latino the consultants matter. The time, uh, what? Latino consultants matter. Let me say oh, something yeah. about that. Hashtag brown consultants matter. Yeah, brown, that's that's, that's what it, it is. That's, um, can I, first can, of all, yeah. Can I say something about that? Let me just be very clear about something. Chuck Roca, Rocha is co-opting the plight of brown and Latino people and trying to funnel money and networks into his firm. Yep. Don't ever let you... If Chuck Chuck Roca, like I said, his he may be Latino nationality, that may be his ethnicity, but make no mistake about it, colorism is still a thing in Latin America. And if, if he was really out here looking like the rest of the brown community, you, first of all, you're never going to be a union leader. We don't, you don't even get a chance to embezzle union money if you're really out here looking like damn Johnny Tsunami back here, okay? Looking like you came straight out of the damn uh, mountains of Peru in this bitch, okay? You're not going to get the damn job. So, but if you get the job and you embezzle the money, oh, your ass going to jail. You're going to jail you're not, and you're not getting hired. Matter of fact, if you're actually brown, you don't ever meet Jeff Weaver for him to pull the strings to get you this job. So let me be clear about that. The last thing I want to say is, the one thing I loved about it was they really did, they, 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 uh, they threw a lot of praise on Nina. They really did. And I love, man, listening to her speeches and I hear them all, I still get goosebumps when I hear, I'm like, bro, how did you not listen to this woman? How did you not listen to this woman? But on the other side of that token, you notice how they were bragging about how they went out to the Latin vote. What, what about the black vote? Who was, who was that coordinator? Hmm? 
Who was that coordinator? I'm, I'm genuine. Because I know who it was in 2016. His name was Marcus Farrell, and he was ignored at every single turn by Jeff Weaver and Bernie Sanders, unfortunately. Yeah, they didn't have one. But Nina Turner was supposed to be the like the one that got it. But again, she was stopped at every other and turn. She was ignored. Yeah, every black yeah. person who was on the staff this year said that Nina was ignored at every turn. So that that was massive to me. Like I know I know for some people like think, little things like that are innocuous, but for me being a part of these campaigns in one form or another, uh, being a part of other political campaigns and being a black man, a black progressive in this space, I know what apathy looks like, what racial apathy looks like, and I know when someone is taking advantage of being able to claim something without ever ever having to really deal with those experiences. Chuck Roca is everything wrong with the progressive movement. The reason that a lot of these neo-progressives have been able to get away with basically co-opting the movement by, while riding Bernie's coattails, while pretend, like fucking David Pakman. I'm Argentinian and Jewish. I'm not white. Well, if you can get your blonde hair, blue-eyed ass out the fucking face, are you kidding me? But this is what you see. And they will take all the credit, never give credit to the brown people who are knocking on those doors. That's the thing. That's what irritated me the most is that I saw uh, my community really knocking on doors for Bernie. I was knocking on doors for Bernie, talking to a lot of Latinos in the, the neighborhoods, East L.A., mm -hmm. here. Chuck um, Roche ain't walk, Chuck, Chuck Rocha rock, walking down East L.A., knocking on doors? No, no, he didn't. I mean, he, he took a photo op to make it look like he did. <laughs> Right. That's what he would do. Yeah. But he wasn't going to do that. I don't even think he can speak Spanish properly. But, you know, it's not even about that. It's about the fact that he was t taking all credit. And a lot of people, need, I would get hey, so we need to drop Chuck Roca off in Santa Ana and see, see if he survived. <laughs> well, the, Nico, like I'll go on Twitter. I would go on Twitter not too long ago and I'd say something about Chuck Rocha and be like, Oh no, but uh, Chuck Rocha, I mean, he was on Rising and, um, you know, he, he got the Latino vote for Bernie. Like Bernie would have never gotten the Latino vote if oh it wasn't for him. That irritates the fuck out of me because that mm -hmm. did not happen because of Chuck Rocha. That happened because of the blood, sweat and tears of the field organizers, of the volunteers that were pushed out by the, the likes of Chuck Rocha, who hired all of these union corrupt motherfuckers like the, the, um, Lewis Myerses and the Jorrells, all these people who were hired by Rocha, who were also who also hired Shelly Jackson, who is now engaged to Jeff Weaver. I mean, this is a cabal. It's just typical Democratic Party behavior, right? Like yeah, sex, fee. lies. I embezzled. got a question. I got a question for you, and I, I would love to know what you think about this. So obviously, Bernie had no problem, which is interesting because Bernie is very, very like he's he's weird when it comes to people taking credit for anything that has to do with his movement. He's always been weird about that type of stuff. Um, but he let Chuck Roca take all kinds of credit over and over and over again. And he uplifted a consultant, which is probably the first time that we had ever seen him do this. Once yeah. again, I got to ask, why weren't you uplifting? Where's that black consultant with that black progressive firm? Where, where were they at on the, on the Hill Rising? Where were they at in these interviews? Yeah, you said, oh, well, but Nina. No, no, no. Nina was a co-chair who was a senator who had already earned her own goddamn clout and put in the work. And uh, I won't say, I would say that she was elevated by Bernie, but really it was always, okay, after Jeff Weaver fucks everything up, as usual, hey, pretty please black woman, come in and fix it. That's what basically Nina Turner has been a fucking cleanup woman for Bernie Sanders and his mistakes. But where is the black consultant? that should have been paid the most money from the beginning. If you're gonna pay anybody the most money, it need to be Nina Turner. Hell, maybe Bree and Nina might need to, cause of the shit that they took, they might need to be paid the most, like the same. And then whoever that black consultant is considering, the narrative has been for four years straight that you have not put enough effort into the black vote. But instead you brought in, you, you brought in black people who, what it seemed like the campaign felt should just be thankful to be a part of the fucking movement. Working for free. Traveling, yeah, they get their you know expenses covered, but they weren't getting paid like Chuck Roker. Bernie wasn't giving them. The, I know for a fact, Bernie was not giving those people the time of day when it came to how do you get the black vote. No, you know how you get the black vote? Just tell everybody how great Bernie is for black people and what he's done for black people. Well, yeah, but we need a strategy. No, no, no. Just go up there and talk about how great he is and how much you love him. Like that type of shit. And then programs like Vice elevate people like Chuck Roker, and it's just a, it's a it's a it's cyclical. We see this over yep. and over and over again. It's just so frustrating and tiring. I know we- Well, I they elevate frauds. So it's, many frauds. It's the, the progressive movement 
doesn't know how to distinguish between real activism and people fraud. There are a lot of people, not just Chuck Rocha, who have profited and and manipulated mm. themselves into fame through the progressive movement. And people like Bernie and other people can't tell who's real and who isn't. And that's a problem in our movement because that's how co-option happens. That's how you get those corrupt people like the Tanya Sayings, like the Chuck Rochas, like those people like propped up by the campaign. I mean, Claire Sandberg propped her up. I mean, it's just, it's, this is one example of many. It's a problem we have in our movement. hundred percent. And I want to say the timing, the timing was also something that was really bothersome to me um, because I would say 2016 was probably more glaring, right? Because mm. Hillary was, I mean, you go to Hillary's rallies, it was dead. All, you know, the FBI investigation, there was, we want to talk about a blackout. Everything was, oh, it's just a right wing conspiracy, except for it wasn't a conspiracy. Ch James Comey admitted you were guilty, but you just didn't mean to do it. So we're not going to charge you with anything. Like, no. But if that was Bernie, oh my God, right? Uh, but you can't do that in 2016 because you know he's going to run again. You don't want to educate them. But now, you, but, but this is once again, Bernie gets all this free publicity. Oh, everybody feel bad for him. Everybody feel bad for Chuck Rhodes. Everybody feel bad for Jeff Weaver. But y'all didn't take the steps to stop it. But most importantly, Vice didn't care. Bernie Blackout. Anybody want to talk about how Vice treated Bernie over the last four years? Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they couldn't. They, but the thing now, they can do an autopsy of the campaign because um, at least, and then, let's be honest, right? It wasn't favorable towards mainstream media. They were really going at mainstream media's net the entire. But it looks like they were just going after their own competition. Not that they were, because they didn't cover any of the ways that Vice covered the shit, which is interesting to me. And I noticed it. It was glaring. I'm like, hold up. So y'all not going to talk about how Vice has been covering this? Because I, I remember they've either blacked him out, allowed smear articles to be written, unverified propaganda to be written by him and other progressives. But now y'all want to go at CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post. Every, you can go at everybody else. Now, after the fact, because you know that Bernie Sanders is never going to run again. <laughs> it was a, yeah. It's a joke. Like, I, I, like some of it I'm happy about because I know they're mainstream media, so people will see it, hopefully in a yeah. light that they haven't seen it in before, yeah. now that the mainstream media is confirming this. But at the same time, uh, I, I always question ulterior motives when it comes to this type of shit. Uh, when we've been saying all this, why didn't you say this during the election? Where was this at before, yeah, yeah, right yeah, before sure. the, now. you didn't even need the Iowa and New Hampshire shit. You could have, just from the last year, before the elections even started, you could have released this right before February from all the shit that no, we had we dealt with. That. But you didn't do that and you couldn't do it because you're still mainstream yeah. media. Go ahead, Pasta. I was just going to say, just for the record, I reached out to the Bernie Sanders campaign to try to be Italian outreach and I was denied. So You're not, you're not Sicilian enough, man. Very hard to be an Italian man in America nowadays. Did you bring in your bolognese? The, the struggle. Yeah, yeah. Bolognese fall. I got, you know, I got Damn. turned down. And uh, it was very upsetting. The Bolognese one went him over, bro. You is you done? Uh, if you was you're never Northern Italian looking. If you were Southern Italian, if looking, I was Southern Italian, if, if I have a Sicilian look like my mother, I look more like my father, Northern Italian. Nico, it's tough. It's hard times over here. Honestly, considering how the Bernie Sand campaign moved in the past, I figured being more Northern Italian looking, white, like that's more acceptable. You, I'm surprised you didn't get a two hundred thousand dollar consulting job with them. I should have. I to not do to shit. Turn this down. You're too close to Weaver. Italian consultants <laughs> matter, fam. Eat some meat, a pasta. Italian consultant. Who doesn't like it, the pasta? Yes. <laughs> Just walk around saying that. Going... See, all the Italian Americans, they're pretty much most of them are voting for Trump. I'd like to go over there and try to get some of them over there and stuff like that. But as far as the blackout, I feel you really felt that Tulsi was more blacked out this time around. Bernie was just negatively attacked all the time and just didn't take the opportunity to throw it back at them. Because they started attacking Tulsi at first, but she just bit back. You know what I'm saying? And they were like, all right, let's stop attacking her. Let's just black her out. <laughs> yeah, they were like, you know what? This is not working out how we thought it was going to work out. So let's just shut up altogether. And yeah. like, this isn't like 2016. It wasn't six debates. You know, there was a multi Bernie was part of every debate. A lot of people said he won the majority of the debates. A lot of people have said that, you know, we know that his policies were adopted or at least in, you know, uh, they were nominally adopted by the majority of the candidates for the half, for the first half of the race because they needed to capitulate to him and his supporters right. in order to seem like they were more left than they really were. Like, bro, you had every perceivable advantage. The mainstream media attacking you, if it, at that level, if you don't benefit from it, it's because of your failure. It is like there's Trump figured it out real quick. Totally. Who's bad? 
Republicans, yes. Democrats, media, everybody. Fuck them all. Yeah. Because they goes all back to the, Go ahead. the strategy, though, Nico. That it, goes it, back it, to just the, bad strategy. their strategy mm -hmm. was you cannot resemble Trump in any way, shape, or form. The Democratic Party has criticized you, saying that you are the, the equivalent of Trump on the left, which is actually what he should have aimed for instead. And uh, he wouldn't have lost all the, all the, so, you know, the independents, the libertarians, all those people he had in 2016, he wouldn't have lost them. Instead, they, their focus was take your base for granted. Literally, it was like, you have your base. They're going to be with you no matter what. We need to focus on <sighs> the people that are maybe like Bernie, but still need to get convinced. And that's the centrist. That's, that's, yeah. That was their focus. And that take was your base for nail in the coffin. Take your base for granted and throw your allies under the bus. That's how we'll get there. Like and form what? no coalitions, right? For don't don't reach out to anybody for an endorsement. Not even Clyburn, who you literally would need to win South Carolina. Like, well, I, you know, I got my problems with Clyburn, but whenever I read that article that Bernie didn't even reach out to him for the endorsement, I say, are you? So you just and once again, very emblematic of Bernie Sanders is his and his behavior. Like, how do you not? You go beg for that fucking endorsement. You go beg for it. This is your last chance. Yeah. You go beg for that shit. You show South how, Carolina. How, yeah, in South Carolina. How you I show mean, how oh, humble you, need you that are. Endorsement. You show how okay. humble you are. You show how you're willing to let the black community lead where we need to lead and lead him in the right direction when it comes to our issues. You go do you fucking suck it up, suck up your pride. You go beg for that fucking endorsement for Clyburn. Cause they can't For the record. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, for the record, um, there, there, this was such a really large campaign, and there was a team designated into getting endorsements. And believe me, that Clyburn the endorsements special. that they, they so had issues getting everybody's endorsements. They even had issues with AOC. They had issues with Ariana Grande. There like is they, 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 The people who were in charge of the endorsement process fucked it up. But there are some people... You don't got no team. They ain't no team. To, you don't go get Clyburn's endorsement with a fucking team. You walk in there yeah, with Bernie, exactly. with Nina Turner, Cornell West, and Killer Mike, and his black, and you sit down and say, "I'm That's just right. here to listen." Yeah. That's what I'm here to do, and to ask you or no, fuck that, beg you for. You. There are certain people, even with uh, uh, um, Andrew Yang, you don't fucking send a team to go get that endorsement from Andrew Yang. You go out and fucking get it. You don't send a team yeah. for Tulsi. A team, whenever Tulsi said, you know, I talked to his team, I mean, fuck that. Why the hell wasn't Bernie answering his own fucking phone? You know what I'm saying? There's, there, I understand some people, like Sarah, so Ariana Grande, I would send my team. I would. Uh, there's some people that I would just send a team. But there are some people whose endorsements are so coveted in politics. You don't go fucking send a team. You get your ass up in politics. You know yourself. We know you know how to, yeah. Bernie. We know you fucking know how to politic. You can't pretend like you don't know how to when it's time to go to suck to. Oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started on that shit. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. It just it's, it's very frustrating because you just see this. This, this no, he should. Clyburn was important. Clyburn was important. Yeah, it, 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 but it's yeah. once he should have showed up with Jesse Jackson if he had to. It shows just that go progressives get, to get on your team, and it should have got to him early. But a lot of people made mistakes in South Carolina. Even the Tulsi team didn't send the proper people out to South Carolina early enough in time and do what they needed had to do. South Carolina was forgotten and messed up by all the progressives. It was, but yeah. Tulsi also didn't have the fucking money. She had to react late to South Carolina because she was spending most of her money in New Hampshire at the time. So, like, yeah, there was mistakes made, but Tulsi went after Clyburn's endorsement. I know for a fact she did. So, I mean, there was no, there was no pride and ego in how... Tulsi went about her business in that regard. And I'm not saying you can't have any problem. I'm not saying like if he rejects it, then you just go back and you know keep going back and, and like I'm not saying like do that. What I'm saying is respect the black vote that you want so fucking bad. Respect the respect the black voices that you all exploit so much to pretend like you give a fuck about racism as much as you really don't. Okay? Like, yeah, yeah. if you want to, you old black or brown consultants matter, then respect the, elevate those fucking field organizers. Those people matter. Yeah. The ones who, those ones who, org, law, yeah, listen, y'all, I mean, I'm not, I'm black, but I got, my, half my family's Latin, my white Latin. Look, you know how hard it is to organize, uh, organize Latinos, bro? They on a different time zone half the time. Boy, you can't get them on time. Y'all know how long it takes for you to get to the studio? Come on, man. Get them fucking field organizers a job and pay the, Huh? Ah, that's sexist. <laughs> sexist, racist, misogynist. That's it. All that shit. You're Trump. You're canceled. But, 
But in all seriousness, cancel them. You you see this over and over, and our movement is suffering because it's it. We want to pretend like we're this diverse, uh, uh like a, a concoction, like a mixture, right, of all these different backgrounds and ethnicities, and races, and gender. No, no, we're not. We're a fucking salad, and everything is sitting separate. Some people are sitting over here. Some people are sitting over here. So we have all the ingredients in the bowl, but for some reason, we're afraid to mix the ingredients together. I don't know how it might taste. What if the tomato overwhelms the cheese? Like, we are never going to get anywhere the more we continue to elevate these milk toast ass white neo progressives. I don't know how else to fucking say it. And, and we don't start taking seriously exactly. the, the progressives that the people of color, the black people, the progressives who've been through this, and that's why they fight, not because of what they have to gain, but because they don't want anyone else to lose and sacrifice as much as they've had to lose and sacrifice their entire lives, or their parents have had to lose and sacrifice their entire lives. Now, with that being said, I know Paz was supposed yeah. to go a while ago, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, make sure that if you are here, go follow the Convo Couch on Rockfin. Before you leave, considering endorsing- you nice here. Endorsing- Nico House at Rockfin. You can go endorse and you get all the premium content and every other Thursday Rockfin premium stream going forward. Uh, Pasa made sure to make a special, told me to make a special announcement that you don't have to go endorse them. He would just rather the endorsements go to me. Um, that's what he said. No, I said if you endorse the Convo Couch, we get your stuff for free too as well. I don't think that's what you said. Um, but <laughs> no, I said if you endorse the... But uh, in, all, in, all seriousness, the in all seriousness, y'all, go check out the Convo Couch and if you love their content, make sure you endorse them. They're putting a lot of hard work uh, on the ground and, 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 on, and on the camera. So if you are a big fan of Convo Couches, you've come here by way of them, go endorse them. I mean, I, can't, I cannot speak enough. I cannot speak highly enough about Pasta, Fiorella, and Johnny. That's for damn sure. I appreciate you guys coming on today. Thank you, Nico. Yeah, appreciate thank you for it. having us. Well, when we get together, if we ever get a chance to, we'll go get some donuts. Oh, you damn right. On me, donuts. baby. On all me. Right. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning into this live stream Rockfin inclusive segment of Mikas and Zukas. And always remember more than anything else. Find your balance. Peace. If you like that segment of Mikasa Sukasa, don't forget to like the video and smash that subscribe button. Want access to members only live streams, behind the scenes footage, and other premium content? Well, you can endorse us on Rockman Premium, become a patron through Patreon, or you can sign up for the MCSC Premium membership through YouTube. All the links are in the description below. But hey, more than anything else, more than anything else, more than anything else, more than anything else, always remember, find your balance, 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 always remember, more than anything else, find your balance. Peace.